also teaching at the Technical University, so a part-time thing. And at the moment I'm especially uh, busy with uh, uh, designing uh, electro-acoustical instruments. But it's actually a, a recent hobby. <laughs> it's, I only started with it uh, like two years uh, ago with my own instrument, actually. But uh, um, it is it's, it's something that uh, actually stems for, from a, uh, a time uh, long before, because I'm, I started off as a <coughs> physics student. I didn't finish it, but uh, I studied it quite long, in the time that it was still possible to <laughs> study for a longer time, <laughs> and not finish it, and then still do a second study, <laughs> and uh, go on. So I'm actually a trumpet player, that's what I really am. But, uh, and I also graduated as a composer, and then especially carnatic music, I don't know if anybody knows what that is, it's like South Indian mm. music, uh, especially rhythmically very complex, and uh, since I had a very bad timing when, uh, when, I when I finished as a trumpet player, I thought I can do some extra studies, so that's why. Carnatic music. Anyway, my main focus actually is um, my band, and it's called Tetsepi. It's uh, a 15-piece band. It's a big band, but while we don't play big band music, it's some kind of uh, contemporary stuff. But you'll hear more about it. I'm going to talk about this thing. That's my trumpets. Um, if you see it like this, you you see it, you you think, huh? What's that? Uh, there's quite a few things on it, but actually. When I'm normally playing with the, the instruments, a lot of, and I don't have that iPhone on it, uh, and the extra mouthpiece, but the rest is still there, and people don't see it even. So that I think it's one of the nice things. I also saw it in your saxophone, that it's like really integrated in the instrument, and also like, yeah, looks still like a natural instrument. It feels like this. Um, yeah, this, this is, these are all things that um, actually are said by Donna as well, I think. <laughs> actually, I, 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 when, you heard your, when I heard your talk, I uh, recognized a lot of things you said about uh, um, the motivation to build such an instrument. Uh, for me, um, when I started uh, building this instrument, it was... Um, was because I was not happy with the, the things that were ready made and available. And that's the main reason, but I come to that in my talk. So, these are the tools I uh, used. And uh, one of the things that is nice, I think, about it, um, that is, it's now doable to make such a thing at home. Because I did. And this, these tools are, I mean, they are not very cheap, but they are affordable. Nowadays, I think like 10 years ago, you couldn't uh, bu uh, uh, build such an instrument without having an institution behind you. But actually, I could do it at home. And uh, well, maybe with some help from a fab lab, you, are still, you, you could do it as well if you are interested to build such a thing. Um, <coughs> let's see. Um, if you want to know more about this instrument, I've already started about uh, Electrumpets, that's the name of the instrument, .nl. If you want to know really about all the technical details, I won't talk about all of them, but you can see it over there if you are really interested. Um, my begin situation, I talk, already talked about my band, that's happy, and because music is always good to talk about, but better to listen at. So let's hear something of that band.
that gives you an idea what sounds I have to cope with when uh, building this, when playing this instrument. It's, uh, we play kind of uh, uh, dense, heavy uh, music. And uh, so when designing my patches, I'm also thinking with this uh, band in my, the back of my head. Uh, it's the, my main focus, and I also want to use it in the context of more players. So I don't want to build it like a solo instrument, but more like uh, what extra possibilities can I uh, add to the, to the orchestra by using this instrument. I think it's an important focus. One of my main inspirations to also start with doing this live electronics in the band was actually Edwin van der Heijden. We did a project with him of, of, you know, 10 years ago, I think, already. And he did a lot with live electronics, and this is one of the pieces we did with him. <laughs> So uh, I actually left it apart and I worked with, an, with the live, live electronics but then with another uh, guy doing the controls and me playing the trumpet just loose. And then I felt really like uh, free to, to play with the electronics. But, well, there was a wish to go further than that. And uh, actually when you play trumpet you only use three fingers. Normally you have three knobs on trumpet those three, and the left hand is actually pretty uh, free to do other things. And uh, that's also what Perry Cook said uh, about it, and um, um, it's, it's, so you see a lot of, uh, actually there are quite, kind of, quite a few um, hybrid trumpets already on, done before that I did mine. Uh, I will show you a few of them. Um, this is actually the <laughs> looks horrible, I think. <laughs> the Morris on the digital trumpet. Um, this is not a controller on the trumpet, but this is a, a MIDI kind of uh, trumpet. And this is what's really what I d didn't want to have. Because when I, the thing that you can do with uh, this uh, instrument is play, for example, saxophone or other kind of uh, instrument with the trumpet, but I thought, well, when I want to play a saxophone, I buy one and learn to play it. So, um, actually, I was more interested in live electronics uh, based on the real acoustic sound of the trumpet. Uh, this goes also a little bit in the same direction as the first instrument, where the absolute sound of the trumpet is muted through uh, uh, Yamaha, silent brass it's called, so you can practice in hotel rooms and then still uh, get the action of the, the trumpets. Um, this was also something similar. It's, I think it was designed for Wind the Sounds, but I wonder if he ever played it. <laughs> Actually. Uh, then Sukhanda Kardatinata, he uh, designed quite a few instruments, I think. He did one of them, one, a few of them here actually. You know better than I know. This one was made for Radish Meta. Um, 
one for axle journey and one for Jonathan Impact. Um, well, what they have in common, I, I don't hear a lot about it, and I, I asked the um how it went with these instruments, and the thing is that mostly they are not they, they are not played anymore so much by these uh, designers. And there was, a, there was a little bit of a worry. So I thought maybe I'm designing an instrument and then I stopped playing it after a short while. Well, this guy, uh, this thing was also built with help from Stein, the mutant trumpets. Um, and the nice thing about it is Ben, he, plays it, he still plays it. And actually, he said, like, this instrument got me a lot of gigs, so that's made me more hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a good reason to build such an instrument. <laughs> anyway, oh, well, the nice thing, of course, with this instrument, it's not only electronics, but he also extended his uh, trumpet with three, two, two extra bells, so it's also acoustically uh, modified. And then there's a new instrument. Actually, I have a film of it. And I don't know, but uh, it's nice to show it to you. Um, as far as... on my trumpets and well the nice thing about it is actually he has all the the sound processing done on the trumpets so this is really uh, uh, what the nice thing about it is that it's really a, a little standalone trumpet so maybe this sounds still still a little bit in his uh, childhood but it might be a, might be a future for this kind of instrument as well um, yeah yeah. <coughs> um, one, the, the first important uh, reason to uh, to have this um, instrument is to have one focus. Um, would that mean like if you have a loose controller next to your trumpet, then for the audience it's like looking that looking that way, but it's also for the player, uh, for me it's very important to be like really into my instrument. It's what I feel when I play as a trumpet player, and what I really like is that I'm yeah totally lost to the world in a way, and really on my instrument. And I hope, and it's getting more and more there. I hope to be able to have that, have that same kind of feeling with the hybrid instrument in the future. And it was nice to, to see Michael uh, with his first talk because I, it reminded me of where I was like two years ago when I just uh, built uh, the instrument and I, re and, uh, I recognized things uh, he said and also recognized, hey, I'm not there yet, but I made quite a step from where I was two years ago. But it's really like, uh, that's, it doesn't go that fast because oh, it's in photos. Um, it was really nice to um, um, to be able to um, to work with it for, for, for two years, but I'm also realizing that I probably have to work for uh, five or maybe ten more years to really uh, understand the instrument, because that's what it takes to learn an instrument. Ten years is a normal time to learn an instrument, and well, that was a Good uh, thing to real. It's a good thing to realize when you start building these things. Um, expressiveness is for me is very important. Well, that's 
It's very closely related to that first story that I told you. Uh, and it's also a very um, uh, important design uh, uh, idea. And uh, I think uh, there was a, a remark on uh, uh, using uh, the bread as a sensor. And I think that is a very wise remark because I, I started off this instrument without the, the actually uh, bread controller. And once that was incorporated, it, 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 uh, it immediately, I don't know if it changed the sound so much, but it changed my feeling totally uh, because it's so natural for me to be busy with uh, playing uh, with, my, uh, with my bread, which, which starts the sounds actually. Without bread, there's no sound. Okay, uh, this one is, uh, mm -hmm. we already saw it. Um, I don't know what I meant with that remark, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it's the same remark uh, I've seen before, easy accessible sensors. Um, they are actually, I don't have to play, uh, to change my playing position. And it's exactly the same. Um, the, the thumb is always a pivot point for a trumpet player, and when you play the trumpet correctly, you have it like really like a counterweight, and that stays the same for the for the play, the, the valves and the knobs that I have here. Um, uh, was not too expensive, or well, we can discuss that. <laughs> Low weights, that's true. It's uh, there are trumpets without electronics that are more heavy than this one. Uh, it's wireless, and it is. Bluetooth also in my case. Low latency could be lower, but uh, doable. And, um, well, the no need for a laptop screen. Uh, I still need a screen. And that main reason is that I use more buffers, and I want to see which buffer is actually recording or playing, for example. And uh, actually, it's also good to have a screen to be able to check, for example, your, your sound. And what I'm using is an iPhone on the, on the trumpet, and there's actually a very uh, easy way to connect this uh, shared desktop. You probably heard about it. You make a network between the computer and your iPhone, and there's kind of, there are more uh, shared desktop uh, uh, applications. Actually, I'm using iTeleport, and it's very stable. And uh, what you're seeing there, I'm actually seeing it on my screen too. It's a little bit small. Um, it's this is an, a normal trumpet. I can still play. <laughs> Sometimes, for example, when the screen was on my bell, when it uh, really uh, made a dent in my in my sound. So, but it's the way it is now. It's uh, really uh, uh, good. And actually, I'm going to to have an, a new instrument in half a year, or something like that. Someone is going to build it for me uh, in Switzerland, in which the it really gets incorporated in the, into the instrument all the sensors. So this I made myself, but he will make some, some, yeah, some attachments so that it's really also um, um, really balanced out also for the sound because it is a little bit, you know. Um, and the whole system, it, actually, when I go to a gig, I only have that bag and my uh, folding bag. Where is it? Actually, well, anyway, and. Um, and my trumpet case, and uh, I can take everything with me uh, to the gig. Uh, and they can also check me on the airport, and then still they'll, they'll see that uh, I can even demonstrate my instrument to the employees over there when they think what's that. Anyway, um, these are the sensors that are there. I have four switches, well, actually, five, and it's I hope it's going to be eight, actually, um, and they are over here. 
Then I have four digital files. Um, the nice thing about those, that they, I call them like that, and the nice thing about them is that they feel, they look the same as normal uh, files, but also they feel the same. So they have the same kind of uh, what, resistance uh, as, the, as the normal files have. There, over there. Then I have four slide buttons. Um, they are over here. And uh, actually, they are just buttons, but uh, a way to use a button is also to, to say more or less. So as the volume I'm doing with this uh, with these buttons and more uh, actually three three different parameters I can control with these slide buttons. Then I have two pressure sensors, and I used to have the same ones uh, you had, uh, the FSR, but actually now I have something different. Um, it's uh, well, this the this is the way how it looks when it's not attached to the trumpet. Um, it's uh, fabric uh, sensors. You can make them yourself, and the, the big advantage to make them yourself is that you can make them in the shape that you prefer. And uh, for example, when I have my fingers over here, um, when you use FSRs, they are easy bendable, they break quite uh, quite fast. That's something to remind, uh, to be careful with also. And uh, that's why I'm, uh, I switched to pressures uh, like fabric sensors, and they are actually easy to make, and they are also very cheap to make. And I, and I use a ribbon controller. Some people might know this of the, the keyboards of uh, so it's, yeah, synthesizers. They they used to have them. I don't think they, they still use it. Huh? They're coming back. They come back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, and I have an extra mouthpiece, of course. It was a late, uh, one of the latest editions. This is uh, the site where you can uh, get information about this pressure center, cobacant.at. I'm a bad name. Um, so I talked about this, that it's the second instrument, and it really feels the same, um, and not different grip. These are all the parts that I have on the trumpets. And um, so the, the actually uh, uh, chronics, they are a li little bit hidden. Because they are hidden behind, uh, under this plate, under this uh, aluminium plate. And what is nice about it is that I didn't solder anything to the trumpet, but it's still locked uh, very, uh, locked in place because a normal trumpet has, a, has felts which are screwed on the, on the felt housing and I use those screws to fix my uh, um, extension. And of course this, this uh, um, iPhone holder, this is a normal place where the, the marching band uh, has their uh, harps with music when they are marching in the street. Okay. Uh, Oh yeah, and then I also have this plastic holder. Um, actually, when you are interested in doing this yourself, the shoe, shoe makers, they have these things for making molds of uh, shoes. And, uh, well, it's, it's a vacuum form technique. So I made a, I did it with like a clay. Is that, is that a good uh, clay? And then I used plaster. And then around the plaster, I formed the plastic holder. Um, well, that's my uh, electronic setup. I don't think I have to go into details here. Oh, there is still an old thing. I don't know. Yeah. This is gone because in that's then you can see how fast the technique goes and it's also a little bit frustrating I spent a lot of time to uh, build the first LCD screen on my trumpet to be able to see my sensor, sensor values and when I had finished it uh, like a half a year or a year later this uh, iPhone uh, application uh, 
came around. So I did every, every, all the program was for nothing. Anyway, it's something that you have to live with uh, if you are designing these kind of instruments. Um, this is uh, the, the software setup. And uh, well, I, I'm still using it, but I think I'm go, coming back from this. I use three max MSP instances, so there's three programs actually open sim sim uh, simultaneously. There's one programming uh, that's the uh, that's the um, the instance that takes care of the the data. So the I can show you. That's this one. So this is actually it's sort of kind of a, a standalone program that uh, takes care of the data coming in, um, and it's uh, and I try I have it uh, separate because it's it's trying to get the data very fast and I don't want other other processes to uh, interrupt the the data flow. So when it, this application gets stuck, uh, then I also lose the connection. That was my experience when just starting with this instrument. So I made a separate application, so the data flow can be very fast. And uh, the way it is now, it's like every two milliseconds, there's a measurement made of all the, all the sensors. So that's pretty fast, actually. It's a good uh, resolution. Um, I think that with the increased uh, stability of uh, Max, that I, I probably, uh, it's probably possible to to get it all in one uh, application again. Another thing that I have, um, when going from this, this da data goes two directions. It goes to an, uh, 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 data processing. So I actually use my own uh, trumpet sounds to uh, process. And I do that in a, in a I, I like to, to use a spectral um, processing. That means FFT, like going into the spectral domain. And that means mostly that you like long vector sizes, like long, uh, and actually a long time to, uh, to time delay because of that. Um, and so that is done in one application. And then I send the, the sound over to another application. Yeah. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> I send the sound over to another uh, application, and there um, I do the envelopes and uh, and like the, the, the things that I want to be very quick. And an envelope, I mean like so so that I really have a, a direct response to my uh, to my playing. And it wouldn't be possible in the first uh, instance. Okay, I already said this. Yeah, I'm also. I there are all kinds of uh, uh, ways to communicate between the Arduino and the, and the computer, but I like it to be very uh, compressed. So I made uh, a more compressed version of. Uh, of the, the data uh, handling from the Arduino to the to the computer, it can be done in 70 bytes, which means very fast. And this is my legacy. Everybody knows what that means. This means like the time lag between uh, doing something here and hearing the sounds uh, coming from the box. I tried to measure it, and I came up with something like this. Can be better. Um, well, I already said this, and this I already said as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's it's uh, the purpose is to get away from the computer screen, and it's for two reasons important. Of course, the public, but also when you play in a band with other musicians and you have a laptop uh, next to you, you are another kind of musician. Is my experience. Well. Playing it like this with the iPhone, it's not so, uh, it's not hindering so much in the communication with uh, other. I'm, I'm playing in a trumpet section, 
So then it's, I'm more closely to them, in a way. So this is the way it looks for me. This is the old version, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That I, that I did all for nothing. Huh? <laughs> okay. Well, that's not so... Yeah, maybe... What I'm doing, actually, um, is recording my, my, myself and then play with the sounds that, I'm, uh, that I have recorded. Or sometimes uh, I also use uh, the sensors to directly manipulate the, the sound. <coughs> well, this is still true. It's an old presentation, this is still true. Okay. This is some examples. This is like uh, Tetsepi again. It's a, it's a piece about the submarine. More or less uh, improvised. And the nice... So you can hear I can really play it uh, rhythmically with other players, and that's an important uh, aspect, of course, with uh, such an instrument. Yeah, this is my Anyway, that's also possible with the instrument. Um, well, let's do something. Huh? Shit. Um, the beamer, no, that can't be the case actually. I think I have to close this one. Yes. Exit show. That was new. So everybody can see that the same thing is on the trumpet.
It's like I'm not recording the sound directly, but I record this, the frequencies of the sound. And that I'm keeping in the, in the buffer. And then I can afterwards, in that buffer I can do all kinds of spectral manipulations while it's, uh, also is still the sound in it. Um, and I'm going through that buffer, so it's, it's sort of randomly placed back the, the things that I record. And that other thing that you hear is called feedback. <coughs> because I'm in a good position, I think. Anyway, um, and I, um, well, that's a nice thing actually. When, uh, when such a thing happens, uh, in the, when I just started the instrument, I was like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. So now I know that I just have to uh, push this one and the sound will go low and it's okay. It's, it's a natural panic reaction to not, not know anymore where you have to go when things start uh, singing around. Anyway, um, so I can record. I can also play that back. That's, that's, that's a bug. It shouldn't do this. I can play it back, but I can also 
wants to play a deck? Four, right? Three. Hey. So I go D. I'm uh, playing it back, uh, but I can also with the pressure sensor that are on top, I can transpose uh, the things. And this is especially nice when you do things like. Put this one. It's a little bit different. Since that left hand is not busy, of course I can do the same thing with my thumb, which is on the ribbon controller, and which uh, actually I have the effect of that, it's the spectral delay. I can show it to you. <coughs> Also play it with your effects, and uh, in the mean, in the same time play with the trumpet, and especially using these kinds of kind of sounds that works very, very nicely. Ooh, I think I said most what I wanted to say. Okay, any question? Oh, yeah, questions. Any questions? Yeah. Um, you, say, you said you. Uh, you, you put this icon on your your trumpet to get away from the laptop. Yeah. But do you, do you at all feel like you're just kind of carrying the laptop with you? A little bit. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like. Well, the, would you the, be more the important thing. Uh, the, at all? Yeah. Well, an important thing about about the laptop for me is that you always have to go to the laptop. Well, if it is on your trumpet. I mean, your trumpet is always in front of you. So uh, whether I play this way or that way, and uh, I mean, I always, when I play, mostly I close my eyes anyway. But uh, uh, doesn't matter that I uh, anyway. But uh, it's it's easy. Um, it's in the direction of my of my side. It's it's totally different. Whether you do this or doing this. It's, it's, it's a big difference, and it's uh, it's on a natural position. And this is the position where you normally would have your music. I mean, what's the difference between looking uh, to music, which you can also do it and, and play it expressively, or looking at uh, the screen? Well, but if you're playing free improv, yeah, yeah. Well, I it's it's. Quite, I mean, I don't look at it the whole time, but I look at it like. Uh, I have to know now how to look. But you are right, actually. It's also something that that you have to be aware of. You, the, each screen always draws attention. But it's a difference whether it's a small screen or a big screen. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Well, speaking of mobility, have you thought about maybe adding a wireless clip-on microphone that you have even more freedom with? 
Yeah, I, I thought about it. There, there, I'm still, well, I'm still a little bit in doubt. I mean, this is a very good microphone, yeah. as a ships. Uh, and um, it's, I mean, it's a lot of dexterity. So I, I really yeah. like this quality of, uh, of my microphone to okay. use. I, I tried out different microphones. Mm -hmm. and this one really, uh, uh, li I like this really. You can also move, move towards Exactly, it. that's the, the main reason. Yeah. I mean, when it's so much different between... Well, if I, in this position, start... You see it clips immediately. Yeah, with something so, like a trumpet, you have all this sound coming out of one spot. Like instruments like maybe a saxophone, you have sound coming out the top of the yeah. different places. So maybe, yeah, maybe that's a good reason to use that on an instrument, like a trumpet. Well, I like to use the, yeah, the singers, how do you call it? The microphone? My ticket. My ticket, yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. So that's an important reason to not to do it. But, well, Actually, I'm, it would be nice to have like both, probably, like having a, a and I can easily switch between uh, the, the inputs that uh, that are there. So, I can take another channel. Oh, it's channel three, it's the same channel. Anyway, um, other questions? Have you thought of making devices um, for um, the kind of sick and tired, like a muting thing, but it's actually electronic for the controller. Well, adding more uh, sensors, that's actually a basic yeah. question. Huh? Well, no, but also <laughs> just using, you know, how you have different muting. Um, well, uh, yeah, well, there, there's, there's actually, somebody came with a nice idea, actually. One of the things that you do as a trumpet player is a... <laughs> and they have, actually have a plunger to do that. And I, I'm thinking of maybe adding a, a distance sensor somewhere here that I can like use this like plunger effect, which is very nat natural to do for a trumpet player. On the other hand, plunger playing became more complex with uh, my trumpet uh, over here. So, anyway. Other questions? Any other questions? Suggestions. <laughs> More sensors. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even more. But I mean, uh, the the iPhone, of course, is is uh, uh, equipped with uh, accelerometer yeah. and uh, with uh, compass. I was also already thinking about like being able to point my trumpet at a certain uh, box, and the sound will come from there. Some some things like that. You could put a, a CO2 um, uh, sensor. It's CO2. You're right. <laughs> 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 okay. Or you use the camera on that. Yeah. Well, actually, at the moment, uh, at a, the, I mean, that would mean like two uh, Arduinos, probably. And and for me, well, it's a good, actually, a good thing that you say it. For me, uh, learning to play this, I mean, now I, I'm getting familiar with it. You can hear that I'm, I know where. I, to start uh, certain phrases in the electronics together with the trumpet. And it takes so much time to learn that. So stick to one patch and, and learn that very well. Actually, uh, the next patch I'm busy with is actually almost the same as this patch, but better uh, in sound quality and uh, in responsiveness. But it's not very different in the way I assign my uh, sensors to it, because I think these should become natural habits, actually. So I'm thinking about uh, more like a face for coder kind of uh, a patch with uh, also the spectral delay because it's still like that and maybe some added features. But it's it's now it, now it's part of my my uh, identity <coughs> as a as a player uh, sound wise. These are the sounds that I know, the, the sounds that I expect when I'm playing. Um, well, I think I should stick to that and, and really learn these features well instead of going for all the possibilities that are pos that are there because, yeah, like you said, they are endless and but that doesn't mean that you have to go for the endless, I think. Have you produced a trumpet like this for someone else? No. It's only you. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, it's always a question for me. Should you, should you, you should ask patents or something like that on it. Um, that, that would mean also programming for other people and stuff, and I, I like to play. So, well, maybe in the future, but uh, not yet.